Welcome everybody to Fundamentals of Financial Management, Chapter 9, Part 1. I'm super excited because we're on a chalkboard today. Throwing it back as usual, I'll show you the question. You can pause it to look at it. I'll work it out on the board and we'll make it through this. Here's question number one. And just like last video, just to save us a little time, I won't work out all the numbers, like the minor addition you can do on your own and then just check me. But for the most part, I'll try to talk everything out. Okay, so question number one. We are told that Western Corporation just paid a dividend of $1 a share. So when it says just paid a dividend, it's gonna be D-O, that's how it's denoted, or like D-0. But if it says, um, like, is going to pay, it's going to be D1. So DO equals $1. And then we're told the dividend is expected to grow 12% a year for the next three years, and then 5% a year after. What is the expected dividend per share for each of the next five years? Okay, so this is a five-parter already on the first question, but it's pretty simple. Um, we're told that G, this is our growth rate, equals 12% for the next three years. So years are denoted as N, so we have N equals three. And then G is going to equal five. Um, N is going to equal infinity because it's just um, going on. So what's the expected dividend share for the, each of the next five years? So first we'll start with D1 because it's the upcoming year. So we're going to go D1 equals, um, I'll write this formula first. It's D0, 1 plus G1. And so we can fill this in. Since this is 1, it's going to equal 1, parentheses 1 plus 0.12. Can y'all see that? Huh. Um, I'm going to put it down here. 1, 1 plus 0.12. G is going to be in decimal form. And that's going to give us 1.2544. Okay, and then I'll just, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's going to give us 1.12. And so now I'll just work out the rest really fast. We're just going to be doing the same thing, um, but plugging in. Um, it multiple times. So I'll show you how, how that'll look. D2 for the second year, that's going to equal 1, and then 1 plus 0.12, and then 1 plus 0.12. There we go. And that is going to equal 1.2544. Let me back this up a bit. And once you get it like conceptually, you can just do like 1.12 squared and then multiply it by 1. Point, um, yeah, just do 1.12 squared. And next, we're going to do D3. So D3 is going to equal 1 plus um, 0.12 again, because we're still in that third year. And then we can just cube it. And that's going to equal 1.4049. And now this is where it gets interesting. Now our growth rate is changing. So what we're going to do, we're going to take um, the first three years. So we're going to do 1 times 1 plus 1.12, or 1.12 times 1.12 times 1.12 times 1.05. So it's going to look like this. And this is going to equal D4. That should give you 1.4752. And then for the last one, this is kind of cool. 1 plus 0.12. 1.05 and then we can just square it because there are two years and so this is going to equal 1.5489 I don't get what it is kind of like conceptually so 
if we were to draw a timeline, there's year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, and so from one to three, our growth rate is 0.12, so that's where we're getting that 0.12. And then our last two years is 0.05. And so now our final answer, where did it go? Our final answer right here. This is for the overall because it's you're multiplying something five times, the three and the two. There we go, that's question number one. Let's see how well this thing races. Thanks for bearing with me on the audio on the last one, guys. Sorry it was a little rough. I got a new phone. Okay, here we go. Here is our next problem. Constant growth rate. So we're told that um, the stock is expected to pay 1.8 per share at the end of the year. So do, do you guys remember, we just said um, that if it says it just paid it D0, but if it's at the end of the year, then it's D1. So D1 is gonna equal 1.8. The dividend is expected to grow at a constant rate of 4%. So our growth rate is four, but it's actually 0.04, because we're gonna work with decimals like we did on the last one. Then the required rate of return on the stock is 10%. And we're asked, what's the current value per share? And so this is, we're also gonna work with as a decimal. And this is a super simple one. All we're gonna do is asking for the price or the value. I just denote it as P. This is gonna equal D1 divided by RR minus D, so it's going to look like 1.8 divided by 0.10 minus 0.04, this is going to equal 30. There we go, that's a, a nice and easy one. Okay, our next problem. So we, we are told that this stock currently sells for uh, $38 per share. So the price per share equals $38. And we're also told that you just paid a dividend. So just paid, so it's D0, is $2. And then the dividend is expected to grow at a constant rate of 5% a year. So the growth is 5 or 0.05. The stock price is expected one year from, oh, what stock price is expected one year from now? And then what is the required rate of return? This is a two-parter. Um, let's go first. The price in one year, n equals one. That's just gonna be very simple. You're gonna denote that as the, um, so this is, we're looking for P1, but we already have P0, so what we can do is go P1 equals P0 times one plus C, which makes sense logically. You're just taking the price now and saying, okay, how much is it gonna grow and adding what we currently have. So this is gonna equal 38, one plus point, 05, and that is going to give you 39.9. And next, we are asked, what are we asked? To find the required rate of return, okay. So this is going to look like D, um, where is it? Our DO divided by our PO plus our D. Oh, sorry, our D1, actually. So this is the formula for required rate. And since it's D1, we can't just plug in two, we actually have to find it. I know. So how we're gonna find that is two, using the formula we just did, we're taking our 
R D of that adding one plus our grist rate. And then we can divide it by our PO. And then don't forget to add that growth rate again right here. So that's going to equal 10.53. I hope the chalk is like seeable. Let me know if it's not. Or if it is. I will try to get back on the whiteboard though. This is just the room that was available. And it's kind of fun. I feel a little old school. Okay, next we're on four. Okay, this is a three-parter. Okay, so this enterprise recently paid a dividend. Um, so it just paid, so D equals zero, of 2.75. It expects to have a non-constant growth rate. So that just means that the growth rate won't be the same forever. So non-constant is 18% for two years, followed by 6% thereafter. So it's going to be 18. D. Oh, that's pretty faint. It's all right. Um, N equals two, and then six percent after. And remember, this is going to be decimals. Okay, and then the firm's required rate of return is 12%. So it's asking, first off, how far away is the horizon date? And so this one, we don't even have to do any math. Um, the horizon date, if you think of a horizon, it just goes on forever. Like if you look out onto the sea, it's just like this beautiful, long, long, um, endless plain. And so the horizon date is when the growth rate finally just reaches, reaches infinity and it can just go on steady forever. So it's very simple. It's just how many years until the growth rate is constant. So it's going to be two. Next, we're asked, what's the firm's horizon value or continuing value? So how we find that, um, we're basically going to, um, I think it'd be better if I show you, then you can kind of like explain it in your head, if that makes sense. We're going to take our, um, our D0, and then multiply it by 1. 0.18, so that's just one plus our growth rate right now in the decimals. And then multiply it again by 1.06, which is the infinite um, or constant rate. And then, um, let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Let's see, okay, awesome, we're good. So D0 equals 2.75, and then times that, that is going to give you um, 4.0588, but we're not done there. We have to divide that by our uh, rate of return minus our growth. And both those are going to be in decimal form. So it's going to be 0 0.12 minus 0 0.06. And so total, that's going to give for B, our continuing value is 57.65. Okay, so C, what is our intrinsic um, value today? This is my favorite one because we get to use our financial calculator. Yes, y'all know I love this. Um, to get to this on like a TI-84 Plus or Texas Instruments, all you have to do is press apps, which is the purple button, and then press one for finance, and then just scroll down to um, the NPV, and then you can enter this information. Um, if you need a video on that, let me know. I can make one. Um, what we're going to do is first, let me know if you can see that. First, we're going to enter zero in our CFO. So we're going to go zero G CFO. And then next, we're going to enter um, what we just found. Where is it? We're going to enter, let me show you. These are the numbers you need to enter. And we're just finding how we did like in the first problem. Um, before the growth rate gets constant. So then we're going to enter 3.245 into CFJ again. And then we're going to take that number we found 
and then add it to our second year, which is going to be 3.829591. And so total will be 71.491. Into our CFK, and then 12 is I, and then to find it, you can just press F, and then PV. Awesome. So for C, we're going to get 59.89. There we go. Next problem. Now we're on five. And for this one we have, we are expected to generate $25, 25 million in free cash flow next year. That's a lot of money. Um, and then the constant rate is 4%, so 0 0.04, as we've been doing. Um, the WACC, which means um, the weighted average cost of capital is 10%, and then it has zero non-operating assets. There's 4 million shares of stock, so what is the stock's value per share? This one is a two-parter, so we're gonna do this in two steps. First, we're gonna have to find the value of the firm. So how we do that, we just take that 25 million that we have in cash flow, which is crazy. Then we're going to divide it by um, our WAC in this decimal form and then subtract um, the growth rate. And so this is going to give us and then next to find what we're actually being asked for, which is um, the stock's value per share. All you have to do is take the equity value, which we just found, and then divide it by shares outstanding. So. We're told that there are uh, 40 million shares, so there you go. Okay, next we have question number six. So here, this is a nice and short one. We're told that um, preferred stock outstanding sells for $30 per share and pays a dividend of 2.75 at the end of each year. What is the required rate of return? Okay, so the formula for required rate of return, um, let's see. Oh, this is pretty simple. All we're gonna have to do is um, divide our dividend by the price per share. Easy enough. So. Awesome, that's all we have to do. Trickily short, is that a word? It tricks you because it's so short, but we don't have to complicate it. Next we're asked for our, next we're moving on to the intermediate problem. Here we go. So we're gonna go to seven. So what will be the nominal rate of return on a Perpetual preferred stock, that's a tongue twister, perpetual prepared stock with $100 par value and a stated dividend of 10% of par and a current market price of, so then we're given a bunch of different options, so we're going to work this out four times. And when it says $100 par value with a dividend of 10% of par, that's just using fancy language to say 10% of 100, so our dividend is just going to be 10. Literally, they're just trying to trick you, trip you up to just take whatever percentage of par it is, and then that's your dividend, so 10 for $10. <laughs> they, they're doing too much sometimes, I gotta tell you. So that's before our nominal rate of return. So let's just, we're at, we have a dividend, we know of $10, and then question number one, I mean, um, A, we're told that the current market price is $61. And then B, we're told 
if 90, C, we're told if 10, oh wait, 100, and then D, we're told if 138. So all you have to do is divide 10 by 61, 10 by 90, 10 by 100, 10 by 138. So you're dividing your dividend by your um, current market price. Easy enough. Can you all see that? Let me just make sure. Okay, clear enough. Really, let, let me know if you can see it, because it looks pretty faint from here, but we work with what we can get. Okay, on to the next one. Question number eight. So we're, we're told that this corporation has issued um, perpetual preferred stock with an 8% annual dividend, so that's going to be 0.08, and then the stock currently yields 7%, so 0.07, and its par value is $100. Um, what is the stock's value? So as we just learned, it's just trying to confuse you when it says 8% um, annual dividend, and then the par value is $100. You just take 8% of 100, so our dividend is $8. Um, they're just trying to get the people who, did, like, I don't even know, it's just an $8 dividend. And then the current yield, I'm just going to denote it as Y equals 7%, or 0 0.07. Then our present value. Uh, par value, sorry, that's like present value, that's chapter 7. Par value is $100. And then first it's asked for the stock's value, so all we have to do is take our dividend like we did last time, and this time we're just going to divide it by um, 0.07. So this will equal 114.29. And then B, let's do some work over here. This board is a little too clean over here. Uh, we're told that the suppose interest rates rise and pull up the stock's yield to 9%. What's the new um, market value? Okay, so it rises to 9%. We're just going to plug in 9 right here. 0.09, of course. And that's going to give us 88.89. And then it's not asking us this, but this is just good to know for those conceptual questions. Uh, when there's a higher yield, it's actually lower market value. And you'd be like, what? That doesn't even make sense. Like, if it's higher yield, wouldn't it sell for more? Um, but it's actually because there's a higher risk from like the interest rates changing rapidly. So it's actually going to um, have a lower market value. Question number nine, only three more questions. This is just part one. I'll try to get part two out as quick as possible. Thanks for being patient, y'all. Question number nine. So we are told uh, that this company has a perpetual preferred stock outstanding with a par value of $100. The stock pays a quarterly dividend of $1 and the current price is $45. So. They really are emphasizing knowing what the dividends are. So since it's $1 quarterly, quarterly of course um, means it's happening four times. Like a quarter is 25 cents, so there's uh, four of those in a dollar. So when it's quarterly and it's paying a dollar each quarter, it's gonna be $4. And 
and then the current price is 45. What is the nominal annual rate of return? So we have present value of par value equals $100, and then the dividend equals four. I'm just going to denote it D. Current price equals $45. And so for A, all we have to do is take 4 divided by 45. So that's going to equal 8.8889%. And then B is asking for the effective annual rate of return, or year. And so this is what the formula is going to look like. This one you actually do got to like think about it a little more. So. Effective annual rate of return equals one plus the nominal rate, so we just found that, divided by the number of periods per year. Divided, I mean, um, see the number of periods per year? Minus one. So when we plug that in, that's going to be one plus divided by four, two to four minus one, and that should give us. 9.1896%. There we go. Oh, look at this. Someone got a little decorated. If they don't have it, they should have like um, thicker chalk markers. Like, you know what I mean? Where you can go. Maybe it has like a little wrap around the outside. That'd be helpful. These little ones that really get your fingers working, but it's probably good from. I like to rock climb a little, so that'd be good for it. Okay, here's number 10, like the grip strength. Okay, so this company um, has reserves that are being depleted, so the sales are falling. Falling, pardon. Um, also, because its pit is getting deeper each year, costs are rising. As a result, the company's earnings and dividends are declining at a constant rate of 6% per year. If D0 equals $3 and um, RS, so required rate of return, is 10%, what is the value of the stock? Okay. So for this one, let's first start out by writing what we have per usual. We have a drop, 6% per year. And then we're told D0 equals three dollars. And then what's our stock value? And so I'll write out for the formula that we're going to use. And then where this gets interesting is um, since it's declining, you're going to have to put negative six for everything. So just pay careful attention because that'll throw off your whole answer. So here's the um, formula we're going to use. Y'all remember this one, but since this is D0, we can actually find D1. And to find it, we just go D0 times 1 plus D. So when we plug in our numbers, it'll look like this. Oh, 0.06, sorry. And that should give you 2.82 divided by 0.16. Sorry, the periods are really difficult with these stock things. So this will equal 17.63. There you go. Number 11. And we'll, and we'll do number 12. We can fit that in. The stock is expected to pay a dividend of 2.7 at the end of the year. At the end of the year, you know what that means. D1 equals 2.7, and it should continue 
to grow at a constant rate of 5% per year. If the required rate of return is 15%, what is the stock's expected price four years from today? This is a good example of something like that you would actually want to know like in real life, like what this stock, I mean, this is a little simpler, but what the stock is really worth in four years. And obviously it's more unpredictable in the stock market, but just knowing how to do this math, it actually is important. Um, so we know that B1 equals 2.75. Turn it into a decimal, y'all already know. <laughs> so first, this is going to be, we're going to do this in two parts. First, we have to find the current price. So this is going to be 2.75 divided by our required rate of return minus our growth rate. And so the current price equals $27.5. And then we're going to use that. We're going to say, so this will be P1, but in P4, so this denotes the years. In P4, um, we're going to go uh, use this that we just had. So this might actually be P0. We're going to go 27.5 times 1 plus our growth rate, so 0.05 to the fourth, and so this is going to equal 33.43. There we go. One more problem. I got one less problem with that, if you ask. And it's true. Twelve. So investors require an 8% rate of return on a company stock. So So you're always turning your required rate of return and your growth rate, growth rate into a decimal. Um, next it's telling us um, what is the value if the previous dividend, so previous is going to be B0, was $1.25? And investors expect dividends to grow at a constant annual rate of, and then we have four, four problems for this. So let's come over here. We have negative two, zero, three, and five. And what we're gonna do is plug it in for each number. So it'll look like, here, I'll write out the formula and then we'll plug it in together. So it'll look like 1.25, one minus, I'm just gonna put X, divided by 0.08 plus um, x. Or actually, sorry. So it's negative, this is gonna be a plus, and this is gonna be a minus. This negative two tripped me up. So for example, here we're gonna go 1.25, times, okay, now I know no one can see that. 1.25 times one minus, cause it's negative, minus 0 0.02, 0 0.08 minus 0 0.03. And this is gonna give us 12.25. And I don't think I need to do them all out, just sub in this number to, to where the 0.02 is or where the X is. I'll give you the answer for those. We have 15.63, then we have 25.75, then we have 40, sorry, none of these are negative. 43.75, so that's A, now let's go into B. Using data from part A, uh, what would the growth consultant model the Gordon growth Consult model. 
um, value B if the required rate of return was 8% and the expected growth rate was either 8% or 12%. Are these reasonable results? So this question is just asking us to do the same thing, but it's giving us numbers that will intentionally trip us up and then we have to make conclusions based on those. So for B, we have one, B equals eight or 0 0.08, and then two, B equals 12. Okay, so, or 0.12. So we're going to sub that in, 1 point, oh wait, sorry, and here's where we get an issue, our denominator is going to equal zero, so it's going to be undefined. going to be just plugging in 0.12, 0.12, 0.12, um, and then that's going to end up looking like 1.4 over 0.04, which equals negative 35, and it can't be negative 35, it can't be negative, so um, it's just nonsense. You could literally just write nonsense. Um, and question number C is conceptual. We'll just go over this real fast because it's the last one. Is it reasonable to think that a growth, um, a constant growth stock could have the growth rate higher than the rate of return? Why or why not? So this problem just shows, no, it's not possible. Um, it doesn't work if the required rate of return is equal to or less than C. It must be higher or else it'll like, you'll either get a negative number or a zero. It's undefined, so. Uh, I think this would be fun to start doing. I'm dropping my book at the end of the time. Uh, we're done. It's the best feeling. I hope this was helpful. I'll try to get part two uploaded either today or tomorrow, but there you go.